it is important to also note that the word that has been used here is that your deeds will on that day then in that case have no weight throughout the holy quran it has been mentioned that your deeds will be weighed and not counted that there is a mizan a balance which will weigh and see whether your good deeds are more or your bad deeds are more so the point is that the number of times that you do something good is not as important as why you are doing it you do one thing and do it for the sake of allah it carries a lot more weight than doing a lot of good which is aimless so your deeds will be weighed not counted that i prayed so many times i fasted so many times i did zikr so many times i did hajj so many times i did umrah so many times these things will only have importance once the intention is there that's when their weight will become significant why you are doing something is extremely important even more important than what you are doing now the idea behind all of this is to basically keep remembering the akhira and to keep ourselves focused towards the akhira because as i mentioned that this life does not have any meaning what is what does have meaning is the akhira one way to do it is to constantly talk about the akhira every day talk about the akhira every now and then in some conversation talk about the akhira so that you remind yourself why you are here use items in this life as as cues as flash cards as pointers to help you remember the akhira the holy prophet also used to use these cues connecting everything in the dunya with everything in the akhira for example the dua that the holy prophet recommended before you start to eat your food is allah mubarak lana fi ma razaqtana wa qina azab an-nar bismillahir rahmanir rahim what this means is o oh allah bless the food you have provided us and save us from the punishment of hell fire now tell me something what does your lunch have to do with hell fire o oh allah bless my food save me from hell fire every single thing you pray bless me in this this and this save me from hell fire you always remind yourself of the hell fire you want to stay away from it wa qina azab an-nar when you are driving or you are traveling you say subhan allazi sakkara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu mukrinin wa inna ila rabbina limunqalibun what does this mean glory be to him who has subjected these to our use for we could never have accomplished this by ourselves and to our lord surely we must return so if just take these two examples forget everything else before eating you are saying bless this food remember the hera hereafter while traveling you say oh allah i have to return to you so many times during the day you are remembering akhira and you are reminding yourself why you are here you are reminding yourself of the final destination you can think again what does your car have to do with the akhira these are just things that have been that have been introduced so that we remember the life of the hereafter the final destination now again the sahaba used to look around for these signs and again they also used to map everything in this world with with the akhira whenever they would see a blacksmith or a furnace they would remember the hellfire when they would see wool they would remember mountains on the day of judgment when they would see moths they would remember the state of men on the day of judgment when they would see beautiful streams they would remember jannah when they would see fruits they would remember jannah so even everything that is around you can change it and keep it as pointers flash cards and tips to remind you of the akhira in every single thing you do it mentions in surah al imran chapter 3 verse 16 they say our lord we have believed so forgive us our sins and spare us the punishment of the hell fire these are those people who have really believed in allah subhanahu wa taala that they always say our lord we have believed yes we have believed so forgive us our sins whatever we have done in the past please forgive us we believe in you everything we do from now on is for you allah subhanahu wa taala every single thing we do every act of worship is for you from morning to night my day will be spent in ibadat please save me from the punishment of hellfire and believe me if you want to implement it it's very easy it's not difficult you go to work every morning you work 
change the intention behind it. <coughs> I am working because Allah has asked me to work in this life. I am working because I want to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> by earning a halal rosy, a good risk. Your day will be spent in ibadat. At night, when you sleep, you sleep according to the ways of sunnah. Reciting the verses of the Holy Quran before you go to sleep. Your entire sleep, 8 hours of sleep, is ibadat. It's not difficult. Just change the intentions behind what you are doing. The entire day will become ibadat. And record it in your book as good deed, good deed, good deed, good deed. And each good deed is multiplied by 10. So you can do it. It's possible. People have been doing it before. It can be done now. Now the Holy Prophet mentioned in a hadith that this world is a prison for a believer and the only paradise for a non-believer. <clears throat> Why did he say that? Why is the world a prison for a believer and the only paradise for a non-believer? As Muslims, do you get to go where you want? No, there are certain restrictions. There are certain places where we can't go. Do you get to wear what you want? No, you can't wear just anything you want. There are certain restrictions. There is a dress code you have to follow. Can you eat what you want? No, there are certain restrictions. Can you drink what you want? No, restrictions. So the world is like a prison for a believer. He does certain things and he refrains from certain things. <coughs> Similarly, a non-believer is not bound by these laws. He does whatever he wants, he goes wherever he wants, he is not bound by anything. He can do whatever he pleases. He can make this dunya into a paradise for himself. Now there is a, there is a story <coughs> when the Muslims were moving out of Saudi Arabia and expanding. One of the Muslim leaders met a man, a very poor man, who confronted the Muslim leader and he, and he said that I've heard your prophet say that this world is a prison for a believer and the only paradise for a non-believer. I'm a non-believer. How is this world a paradise for me? I am poor. My life is hell anyway. How is this world a paradise for me? And the general responded by saying, if you think that this is bad, wait till you see the hell. <coughs> And that person said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa shadana Muhammad abdhahu wa rasul. He said the shahada and accepted Islam. Because he too realized that this is really not that bad. It's just a matter of opinion. Happiness as well is a matter of opinion. You can have two people in the same state. One will be thankful to Allah. One will be extremely bitter and horrible. <coughs> Now the example that can be illustrated of a Muslim, of a true believer, is like the example of a horse who has been tied to a rope which has been pegged to the ground. A rope which is let's say 200 meters long. <coughs> that horse has the freedom to roam in that diameter of 200 meters, of that radius of 200 meters. He can roam in, out, but he has to stay within that boundary. He is tied by that rope. That rope for a, be for a believer is Islam. He has to live his life, yes live your life, but live it in the perimeter of this area that Islam has prescribed for you. Don't take a step out of this perimeter, because then you are diving into kufr. You are diving into the things that are associated with non-believers. So stay in this radius that Allah Ta'ala has given for you. Only then can you pass the test. If you make, if you let loose and you become a wild horse roaming around, then clearly you are stepping out of the bounds of Islam. Then clearly you have made this dunya into a paradise for yourself. Or you are at least trying to do that for yourself. So stay within these limits that Allah Ta'ala has defined for you in this book. <clears throat> we are told to submit to the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as Muslims. A Muslim is one who submits to the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is not enough to just believe in Allah. I say I believe in Allah. It's not enough. You know why? Because the shaitan also believes in Allah. The shaitan also believes in Allah. Allah Ta'ala cast him out of the heavens. He knows there is Allah. He believes in Allah. Yet, he does not submit to Allah. 
So just believing and saying I believe is not enough. This is just words that you are speaking. Believing means believing, submitting. Whatever Allah says, you do. Whatever restrictions have been put on you, you follow them. Because you want to achieve the life of the Akhirah, not the life of this world. So the instruction manual is right here. Follow the instructions and submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to achieve a great reward in the hereafter. It is now up to us to implement the Holy Quran into our lives to seek the pleasure and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآخِرَ دَوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ